Shalom. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we thank God for this evening. It's another day the Lord has provided us with. And we have a reason to honor his name. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. We don't need this light. Eh? We might not need this light. We're not doing video. Uh, I want us to continue in what we began. We began talking about Jesus. And uh, what he began or did for us on the cross. Uh, we said if we do not understand what you went through, you cannot make anything good about the faith you have. So today we are looking at chapter 22 verse 39 to 46. If time allows us, we might go beyond that. Now this is the prayer Jesus made just before he went to the cross. Just before he went to the cross. One of the challenges that Jesus has is the problem that or the information he has about the future. He will know who will hate him. He will know who will be against him. As the time goes by, he knows. He knows the kind of problem he's going to face. Imagine if you are aware of what happens tomorrow. And then you know that you're going to be arrested. You're going to be beaten. Ultimately, you're going to be put on a cross. How will you pray? If you will be in that position. Eh? How will you pray? And the truth of the matter is that. Uh, even in this life. We have to be prepared for things that. We do not expect. But for us we don't expect. Because we don't know the future. There was some times when. Life brings another kind of, how can I put it, you know, another kind of circumstances that you didn't expect. Another kind, I'm saying another kind. How do you respond? There is always negative side of life mm -hmm. you don't I think for this year, this year people never expected Russia will be attacking Ukraine although so much has been happening behind the scene now because of that already there are some people who are facing a lot of problems number one the Ukrainians and the people surrounding them Russians are also having their own share of problems. Uh, there are people who are suffering because of what Putin did. And how do you respond? Sometimes evil just arises from nowhere. And uh, because we live in a land that is in a world that is evil by nature. We live in a world that is evil. It is in heaven that you don't and nobody can offend you. When you go to heaven, nobody will offend you. What offends people has been removed from them in heaven. In heaven, life is smooth. I don't even know that he works. Do you, do you do some work in heaven? Or you sleep and then you just eat and drink. What happens in heaven? The 
truth is heaven is also as busy as some cities in the nation of the world. Everybody is busy running up and down. But nobody is uh nobody is uh, is prepared to offend you. So Jesus I think the first person we see offend Jesus is Peter uh, Judas you'll read down there. We'll see, read it down there. And then his disciples could leave him and run. He knows all this will happen. That Peter, Judah is already selling him to somebody. He has already paid some money to sell him. Just like you sell a goat. And all his disciples will run away when he was being arrested. And then from that time until he goes to the cross it will not be easy now he has this in mind as he goes to pray and if I, he thought he has some people who will support him around him <laughs> and then these ones also don't even help him even these ones don't help him so he's in a kind of depression can i use that word depression was jesus depressed yes he was depressed because he knows what is coming his way so depressed uh sometimes when you get depressed you need to go and pray the problem with people some people I was dealing with somebody and he told me he always drinks And he says although not always really because he, he drink, when he gets to the bar to begin drinking he knows that he's already depressed there's a lot of thoughts stress that is hitting him and he doesn't hide if he's drinking and I, i realize that sometimes i call him when he's drinking and he tells me i am in the bar <laughs> drinking you go and sit with him imaisha imenikalia imebidi nikuje nifanye nini ikunywe the issues of this life has been too heavy on me i've just decided to drink and you know at that time i remember when i reached there he's already drinking the fifth bottle of guinness and it is costing 230 bob In fact, he didn't even have all the money, but he's just drinking. <laughs> Depressed. Hmm? Now, when you get depression, when you get when the thoughts begin entering your your mind that disturbs you, you need to go into prayer like Jesus. Jesus went to pray. And he spent hours in prayer. Now, from the what we are going to read here, You realize that when he went with his three disciples Peter, John and James he didn't pray for one hour he prayed for more than one hour he was asking them because they're sleeping can't you spend with me only even for one even for one hour meaning it is more than one hour that he was praying you must we must form such <coughs> You must form such a habit if we expect if we expect to do what if we expect to overcome now the challenge is if you have never formed the habit of prayer you go everywhere telling people your problems and you become the talk of the day everybody around will be talking about you jesus knows where to go and speak his problem to to the father he 
it was not easy for him he knows the next three days it is hard but he didn't go to speak to how do you speak to people who don't even have stamina like you have in fact when they hear that you're dying they even wish that you will not die and you know your death is a must like peter i am going to i'm going to go through some tough times you you're not going to go through tough times <laughs> huh jesus do not deny some of heavy circumstances that comes our life our way which is for molding our character huh some of very serious terrible circumstances that is not easy to be a but god takes you through so that he molds your character so that you stop being like a baby you begin you become like a a man or a woman are you a man or a woman because of your gender somebody said you either a girl or a, a woman a boy or a man <laughs> what you go through and what you persevere is what determines who you are and if you go through big problems and you can still not speak about your problems you are a man or a woman god does not use anybody god will use a man and a woman not a girl or a boy amen <laughs> these talks are very hard yeah <laughs> huh? and when he takes you through circumstances of life he wants you to come out strong not a crime type if anything happens no because for him what is about you see jesus has already gone through much the bible says he came to his own his own rejected him can you imagine when wherever you go you people reject you this one rejects you this one rejects you. <laughs> you are rejected everybody is talking against you 99% of the people that jesus went to preach those are the jews rejected him until today 2000 years down the line I know there's some few years to 2000 still they reject him in Israel even today they don't believe he came that was enough no rejection is terrible everybody is speaking evil and you are doing good to all of them you are doing all you can to help them teach them heal their sick that is enough pain and he came out I'm reading verse 39 of chapter 22 of the book of Luke and he came out and went as he was wont to the mount to the mount olives and his disciples also followed him and then he was at the place he said unto them pray that you enter not into temptation hmm? pray <laughs> what is about to happen is called temptation because you will be tempted to respond contrary to what god expects of you hmm? and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and knelt down and prayed saying father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thine be done hmm? the bible says he withdrew himself from them because he knows when they hit the ground they will be snoring yeah <laughs> they will not be praying they will be sleeping <sighs> after some few minutes there's what he will i think this is overnight yeah i think this should be overnight where do people sleep while praying and the truth is in the morning is when they came for him so i mean meaning <laughs> they had kesha because of what is going to happen tomorrow they know tomorrow jesus knows tomorrow 
and they will come to catch him to arrest him tomorrow they are going to arrest him but then today what are they doing fasting and praying not not fasting and praying they are they are they are over there they are they are transmitting they are praying and he knows as he goes uh they will not pray so what we are saying is so the question i also have is this do you can you pray when you have a very terrible problem ahead of you long hours of prayer Hmm? long hours of can you pray it depends on whether you have trained yourself to pray in fact that some of the prayers we are making here don't take it for granted you know this prayer that we make like that means before preaching we pray not even worship as such we pray a time comes you know some of these prayers you are making is already working something for you in the future you cannot come in his presence in vain and when you come here to pray also you have to be very specific on what you are or what you are up to the bible says and he withdrew from them verse 41 about stones cast and knelt down and prayed saying father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thine be done is this the right prayer he saying if it is your will and he knows he must go through if it is possible want to disappear then the truth is he's also praying so that he will not be tempted temptation is when you when some something comes to you and it is coming to in a in a in a way that will cause discomfort to you and you want to hide from it hmm? that's temptation when you know what you should do and you don't do that is temptation he knows he has to go through this pain Why do you think many men of God when God calls them they hide and they want to run away it is not easy <laughs> If any of you will be asked can you do will you become a pastor what will you say Father please spare me <laughs> spare me I will not be I don't want to be a pastor <laughs> But you want to listen to a pastor <laughs> and you don't want to be one when because you know if you are to become a pastor you have to do what the bible says and you know many of the things that the bible says are hard to do and if you are to preach to people to do what the bible says you must if you don't do god does not recognize you as a minister are you aware of that <laughs> i was reading somewhere a book and somebody said that uh, whenever you are outside what the word of god says god is not with you forget about being a pastor in fact that is also a dangerous one now anybody even believers who are not living in the word of god and they are outside even if you are coming to church every day and you don't do what the bible says god is not with you what could you encourage to not to not could you encourage where two and three gathers The, the lord is there he's not there <laughs> he, he says if you gather in my name in my name does not just mean that we are gathering in the name of jesus no it means being in what he says jesus knows that he has to come and die and now the time has arrived and he's feeling like now father let this pass it will not pass some of us speak that prayer from him if it is your will stop that foolish prayer amen and you know the jesus 
Do you want to tell me Jesus does not know the will of God? Atajui. In fact, Jesus is the will of God revealed. If you want to know anything about God, you will look at who? Jesus. Whatever Jesus did is the will of? He says, I came to please my father and to do his will. Meaning he knows. But because of the heaviness of the problems that he's going to go through, affliction, the Bible calls it affliction, that he's about to go through, he's looking for a way out. But you see, for him now, he has surrendered. He's praying this prayer. He says, but if it is your will, remove. If it is not your will, let it remain. Because it is tough. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Strengthening. You realize it is always difficult to do what the Bible says unless God helps you. Everything that God asks us to do, unless the help of God comes, it is very difficult. Everything. Is it praying? Is it reading the word of God? Giving? So do you doing what? Many people find it very hard. If you are genuine to do what God is asking you to do, he will enable you. You know, he's getting another external support that will help him out. The angels, the Bible says, were sent. This must have been a very serious prayer. Have you prayed until the angels appeared? The truth is some of us have prayed some prayers. And how long did you pray? In the first place. Look at this prayer. Look at this prayer. You must, that's why we have Kesha. In Kesha, I remember last Friday, we prayed three hours, non-stop. From 9 to 12. May God open our eyes to see some of the things we do. Now we are speaking in tongues. I remember even until we are almost going to past, past 12, 30. But still, for me I was feeling still the ability to pray. In such long hours of prayer, something must have happened. Something must have, must have happened. So when things are tough, then he went to pray. And God sent him strength. You know, after prayer, after prayer, you are not the same. After you pray, you are not. And we need to pray this kind of prayer. Not the 20 minutes or 10 minutes prayer. And you think you've prayed so much. Hmm? Father in Jesus name. And then you say some few words. And pray in Asia. Hmm? You're tired. You're like now you look around. <laughs> and people are still praying. And people are still praying. Huh? Thank God for Keshas that we have. That one will force you to, to learn how to pray. Kesha. We need to learn to pray like hours. And we only have one opportunity Friday. And if you miss that one, what you are doing is not prayer. I don't know what you will call it. Those ones are not serious prayer. Those ones are jokes. You know, as you grow spiritually, if you want more result and encounter with God, you need to create more time in prayer. Do you just sleep around and then you get money? How much are you giving to the job that you're doing? When it comes to the things of God, you think it is free, free of charge. You can sleep the way you want and you find it. It is not true. You can hardly see angels come. <laughs> I think many of us have never seen angels because we are not praying seriously. We are not praying seriously. 
Can you pray to a level where angels appear? And you know when they appear, you know it has happened. When he appears, the Bible says, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. Even after the angels came, he's still praying. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Even after the angels came, he was praying earnestly. May that spirit come upon us. In Jesus name. Now this is a prayer you pray. Very seriously. Those are the kind of prayers that will change things. Number one, it will change you. Prayer changes you first. After you have heard the word of God that has been spoken. You see, for Jesus, he knows what has been written concerning him that is going to die. For this word of God to come to pass in your life, there has to be a kind of prayer that you have to make. Why is the word of God theory in many believers' life? They know the word, but they don't have prayer. And their life is totally contrary to what the Bible says. They can speak the promises of God, but they cannot experience less time in prayer. The more you pray, the more whatever the word of God says happens for you. Just hearing itself is also not enough. Hearing yours is not enough. Hmm? And when he rose up from prayers and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise up and pray lest you enter into temptation. Have you ever come across a problem and you see your faith is weak and you don't pray, you just watch. <laughs> Instead of praying, you're just watching. Hata tu ikuja tu yunimalize. Let this problem come and go away with me. I am just tired. <laughs> what a life. <laughs> and that is that's why you see when I always say about it growing spiritually. Like like look at the problem that has been happening to Marsabit. You know the church has just been saying, God, you know. <laughs> and they're just quiet. <laughs> the church is closed. God, you know now we can do nothing. And they said, this one is only God. <laughs> Jesus didn't say this one is only God. And the more they say it's only God, the more they are sinning. Some are buying guns. Some are doing words. Hmm? You don't pray. You see imminent danger. And what are you saying? That's like these people, they're sleeping. I think the other thing is they are not aware of what is happening in the morning. Jesus twice is telling them. This is the second time he is repeating. Pray so that you will not fall into. The word temptation simply means testing for weakness. Can you do in line with what God is saying? Or you look for an escape route. An escape route is called temptation. An escape route. You're looking for another route outside of that. Jesus decided to look, was well, even thinking of looking for that. But he says, you know, when you pray, God gives you the grace to bear the things that look so difficult to bear. That is called grace. Divine ability that is presented to you. I know it, it's not easy to become a pastor. I tell you the truth because I have stayed without pay for eight years. You know, eight years without a salary. 
and for that matter a man not a woman <laughs> huh if it's a woman you know a woman simply waits for the husband to come <laughs> and she simply says <laughs> there is no <laughs> there's no food <laughs> Now it's not about all the only food, only the home where there is no food. They are also looking at you in the church. <laughs> we have this expense. <laughs> we have that expense. I remember the first one here. The first one and I've here almost two years of this church that I'm running. Nobody knows what is happening. How the rent is paid. How instruments are bought. <laughs> how things are <laughs> Huh? Nobody knows. I remember we we preached without this thing for one year. I was just standing here. The Lord was not even there. You have to believe God for things to happen. Even up to today, I'm not saying that we've reached a place where we have all we need. Huh? But if God calls you, he enables you. And the place that you need to sit is under his feet. It is not possible to succeed in this life without earnest and fervent prayer. You must come to a place of prayers where you do more than more than 1 hour. Prayers for more than 1 hour. And that's why you need to force yourself to come to Kesha. Force yourself to come to Ya Kesha. And come and pray for three hours non-stop. <laughs> That also determines the level of your spiritual growth. You experience God depending on how much time you give to him in prayer and his word. There's some things that I have committed myself to do that people find it very hard. People find it very hard to do. Eh? They are like how does it work? Like even sustaining the high school ministry for seven years. And you are doing it to all the schools non stop. Every week some other pastors are like what are you earning from there? Did I come to earn or to give to people hmm? you're paying such amount on radio what are you getting but people have not do not know the truth and jesus is about to appear and i have the message that can save people from that terrible days that is coming can i stay with it god will not ask me how much are you going to gain <laughs> <laughs> what you want to know is did my people get what i want them to have huh? so when you come to to work for god you see that's why i'm saying prayer for your marriage to work prayer for your business to work prayer otherwise you just find this ordinary way of life that people live if your life has to be so different from others there has to be long hours of prayer that you must develop until heaven just comes down you know heaven has arrived many a times when we after we pray even for an hour we speak in tongues i know everything is okay i know i'm going back not the way i came things are totally different praise the lord i think that is enough i am realizing we can go beyond that So I think that is enough. I hope you learned something. If you are a type that prays 15 minutes, add it to trend to go to 30, 1 hour, 2 hours and If you are a type that prays 1 hour, extend it to 2 hours, 3, 4, 5. We need to learn to pray until morning. Just speaking, speaking until 
It is in the morning. I don't think Jesus was sleeping. This is Kesha. This is Kesha. He was not sleeping. Some of us know the dangers are waiting us that we are sleeping. <laughs> what a life. <laughs> it is called anticipating evil. You know, if you think around something, evil is coming to happen. Amen. Father, we are thankful for your word. You are talking to us about prayers we do ours. We pray that you give us that grace to continue in this so that our life reflects your glory wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the grace and the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.